Check one. I'm right here. I got to stay in front of the board. One, one, one. Let's go. One, one, one. Okay. Let me know when we have some people joining us. Does Chris Mazzella hear us? Take the level down a little bit. We have to get some people on. Check one. Check one. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Good afternoon, everybody. We're going to wait just a minute or two more. We just went live a couple minutes ago. We're checking our levels. Okay. Get this on. One, one. Excellent. Terrific. Okay. Looks good. Have a nice group there. Excellent. Terrific. Let me just go to my uh Okay. Excellent. I think we're going to get started. What do you think, son? Ready to go? Where's my assistant, uh, Mia? Open that door for, for Mia so we can get started. Terrific. Excellent. Good afternoon, everybody. Greetings from the Cullen Institute of New York at Monroe College. I am uh, currently here in the Culinary Arts Center. We've got a busy, uh, yeah, we got a busy, a busy uh, place here. We've got classes going on. Students getting ready for a culinary one lab. We've got a baking lab going on behind us. So hopefully you can hear us well. I, we did, a, did an audio check. It seems like we're in good shape. So we're going to get started today. I want to welcome everybody. I know we have a lot of high school students out there from our CCAP programs, our Pro Start programs. We've got some uh, some students that are interested in the in attending Clemson in New York at Monroe College uh, here in the winter and spring semester. So we're very happy that you're with us and joining us. I thought today what we'd do is we'd show you concepting uh, an entree uh, for a dish and maybe a couple different ways of presentation and some presentation basics for you um, to give you kind of an understanding about how we think about food. Uh, we op operate here at the Cullen Institute of New York, the Dining Lab Restaurant, which is a critically acclaimed student-run uh, restaurant. Um, and we do um, you know, services uh, four nights a week. We do menus, students cook the food. So what goes into kind of thinking about uh, concepting a dish? Well, for me, I'm always thinking about, if I'm thinking main course, I'm thinking, what's my substance on the plate? What's my protein? What's my main element, right? So today we're going to do a couple things with chicken, and also we have some salmon to show you as well. And thinking about those dishes and how I would approach them, if I wanted to run a salmon entree, I wanted to run a chicken entree, what I might do. So once I identify the, the protein that I'm going to use, or the main element that I'm going to use, uh, and again, it doesn't always have to be protein-based, it could be a pasta dish. And I'm thinking about pasta as the, as the main element, and then what am I putting into that dish? Um, the next idea for me is, is cooking techniques, right? What techniques do I want to display? And I will tell you that that has a lot of different thoughts behind it, right? The first and foremost is what season am I in, right? What's available to me? Um, so you're going to see today, for example, where, you know, uh, in, in early November, uh, it's uh, 
full swing of autumn here, heading into, heading into the winter uh, season. So we're looking at root vegetables, Brussels sprouts, things along those lines. So you're going to see that integrated today into the, into the menu and into the dishes. So I'm thinking seasonality. I'm thinking cooking techniques. I'm thinking about, you know, uh, garnishes, what elements I can put to it. And then from there, once I've constructed my elements, I'm thinking about how I'm going to present those elements. So what are some of the options? So we're going to go through that, that exercise with you today. Uh, if at any time you have questions, I have a moderator here with us. You can shoot out the questions. I'll, I'll answer uh, the questions for you. If I have a question about what I'm doing or a question about the Coast of New York at, at Monroe College and like some additional information, I can, I can share that with you. But otherwise, let's, uh, let's get started. I'm going to ask my assistant, Mia, who is a freshman student in our program, all the way here from Arizona, to bring me the chicken. Thank you so much, Mia. And I want to give a special thank you to our senior in my program, a hospitality bachelor student, Jay Costantino. Yeah, his name is exactly the same as mine. He's my son. He'll be graduating next semester with his bachelor's in hospitality management. He's also been very involved in the culinary program here. And uh, so he's working the camera and the moderating for us. So we have some chicken here. And what I'm going to do with the chicken is I'm going to, I'm thinking about roast. I'd like to do a roast with the chicken. I think we're in, in the fall here. For me, the fall is uh, about mushrooms and wild mushrooms. So we're going to integrate those elements into the dish. When I'm working whole protein, whole chicken, whole fish, I'm thinking about fabrication. I'm going to cut this chicken up. I'm going to have elements of the dish. I want to figure out how am I going to utilize this bird? I can simply use the breast. Then I have the leg and thigh. What am I doing with that? Maybe something separate, possibly. But it would be nice to bring both elements together on the same plate. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to start the process here with my chicken. My chicken's a bit wet here. We don't like to fabricate wet. So we're going to take some paper. I'm just going to dry this off. Okay? It's a good practice. We want to practice safe. Yeah? So, I'm going to do a suprem. I'll do the chicken two different ways for you. Same concept with two different formulations and garnishes. But in, the, in any event, we're going to suprem both of our chicken breast portions. So I'm taking that fabrication. I'm going to go ahead and pop out my joints here. So I'm exposing, for presentation purposes, my my uh, wing, wing bone here. I also concurrently want to take off just a little bit of the, of the cap of the bone. And I'll explain why I do this. Long bones in any animal are where blood marrow is, is uh, produced. So these bones are full of blood. If I don't do something, when I cook this, the pressure inside the bone is going to build. The blood has nowhere to go, and it typically goes back into the joint. So if that happens, even though the chicken's fully cooked, when I cut into that joint, I'm going to see blood. So we don't want to see that. So in order to get that not to happen, we simply cut a little cap off of the bone, let it vent out, so now the pressure does not build up inside, and the actual blood itself cooks inside the bone. Okay? So we took care of that. Next, I want to do my leg and thigh portion. When I do this, I want to be careful. I want to leave plenty of meat, of skin rather, on the on the, th on the breast. So I'm going to hold my skin here around the breast and make those cuts so I avoid the gouge of skin torn around the breast. From here, it's a simple extraction of leg and thigh. And we're going to take off the leg and thigh portion. And we're going to treat the leg, the thigh portion, a little, sep a little differently today than we, than we would if we roasted the whole chicken. So I'm taking off leg and thigh, making sure I get the oyster out. Zoom in on that, son. Let them see that oyster, bone, that oyster muscle removed out of there. You see that? OK. Again, the fabrication, I'm thinking in terms of seconds, not minutes here. I want to get this thing broken down quick, OK? Now, for the purposes today of our of our dish, we're actually going to cook the breast whole, double breast whole on the bone to get maximum flavor and keep maximum shape. But I don't need all this extra, extraneous 
caucus here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out my backbone on both sides. Okay, and remember all of these products I'm generating here, all of this stuff that's coming off, this is all going to get utilized, yeah? For stock and things like that down the road. So let's move these parts off of here. Okay, now my breast is sitting real nice, okay? Real good here. Got a little tear in the skin, but that's fine, okay? But I want this to sit out flat, and I want to cook it on the bone. So I'm going to make a little incision here. If you zoom in here, son, you can see where I made that cut, right here, okay? Because I want to open up that, that sternum here so that later on when I, when I cook this chicken, I'm able to get this off the bone very easily, okay? So I open that up, okay? Flatten that out nice, and now I'm ready to roast this chicken. And I'm going to leave all this extra skin on, because it's going to shrink back a little bit. So let's go ahead and season up our chicken and get that into the, uh, I'm going to need some peppercorns, honey, in that, in that grinder. I don't think that's full. Okay. Salting up well. Okay. I'm going to go into a hot oven here. And in this preparation, I want to get a little bit of fat under the skin. I want to get that butter in there. I'm going to just pull up the breast skin a little bit and throw a nugget of butter under there so that base itself while it roasts, okay? And we'll come back with the pepper in a moment. Okay, so my chicken breast is going in the oven. We're going to roast that for about 30 minutes. And then we'll show you how we finish that off. Okay, so for my thigh now. Okay, let's get a pan on the fire here. I'm going to go ahead and take my, my thigh, and we're going to go ahead and do a braise with the thigh. And what I'm going to do here, leaving our legs for another preparation, I'm going to simply take my, my thigh bone out, Again, we're looking at concepts. I could roast a whole chicken and serve part of the leg and thigh. That's certainly, that's certainly plausible. But when we're thinking high level cooking, we want to make sure that we're really exhausting all possibilities here of interest for the guest, okay? So, I'm going to go skin off on this breast, on this thigh rather. Again, we're going to be saving all parts of this. And I'm going to simply split that thigh in two. Two pieces. So do the same thing on the other one. Going after the thigh bone. Okay, pull that out. Trimming any cartilage that might be there. Trimming off the skin. And again, splitting this just in half. So I got four nice pieces here. Okay, I'm gonna season those up. And we're gonna get our pan on the fire. To get the ball rolling. So salt and pepper. I'm using black pepper here, white pepper is fine. I prefer the black. Both sides here. Salt and pepper. And we're going to go to the fire. First with a little bit of oil in our pan. And we're going to do a braise. So I got a roast in the oven. Chicken, the chicken is roasting, my chicken breast is roasting in the oven. Now we're going to go into a braise technique, okay? So I got a nice hot pan, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to get a good sear on these thighs here. Okay, again, some beautiful thigh morsels. Let's let those get some good color. In the meantime, 
we're going to go ahead and get rid of our cutting board here with the chicken pieces and my knife. I'm going to come up in here with my gloves and we're going to do a quick sanitize here. Okay. Now, I wore gloves for my fabrication. I didn't have to. I made the decision to do that so I can stay on camera and not walk over to the sink every time. So I'm working with gloves. I'm working with sanitizer, keeping everything clean. At the end of the day, this is time well spent. He goes, clean, clean station, clean food, happy guest. Yeah? Okay? So let's take a look and see what we got going on here. Okay, come on in here, son. Let's see what we got here. So I have my thigh morsels here, and I'm getting some good color here, nice and brown. And again, this is going to be a, a classic braising technique that we're using. Okay? So my morsels are going in. I've got some seasoning here. Again, I'm cooking very simply here. You can see good color, but also very good caramelization in my pan. Okay? At this point, we're going to deglaze. And I'm thinking for this particular dish, I want to get some tomato into the dish. So a little bit of white wine on the deglaze. I'm going to go in with some fresh chopped tomato. Who knows what that's called, the fresh chopped, skinless, seedless, tomato chopped. Let's see if we get the answer. Let's see if they have the answer for us in the chat, what that's called. Tomato blank. Did we get that? Did anybody get that answer? this a little bit. Okay, so now, how do we do that? They get that answer? The tomato, seedless, skinless, and rough chop. What's that called in, in, uh, in cooking terms? Anybody answer that question? No answer. Oh, my goodness. Who answered that? What's his name? Jay. Jay. Congratulations, Jay. You got it. Concasse. Can we say that? Concasse? I can't hear you. Okay, so brown stock goes in. And we're going to start our braise. Let me show them how to do a cartouche. Let's get a sheet of parchment. We're going to cover our braise. Okay. I had a very nice reduced chicken stock, which had some good caramelized vegetable flavor in there. So I didn't feel a need here to use a mirepoix. Thank you, honey. So I'm going to go straight stock, white wine, and tomato. Okay? And then later on, we'll come in with some fresh herbs. Okay? So I want to cover my pot, but I don't want to put a cover on it. That sounds weird. Okay? But... We want to let some of the steam escape, but we don't want it to happen too quickly. So we're going to take a piece of parchment paper. We're going to go ahead and cover this over. Fold it over once, twice, and then I'm going to come around here and make a little cone shape, folding to the folded end like this. To the center of my pot measured, then I'm going to go ahead and cut and I have a perfect circle. We call that a cartouche, okay? That's going to go over my chicken here in the pan. If you go back to that camera angle, son, yeah, you can see my chicken is now covered slightly and simmering gently. My roasted chicken is in the oven. And we're going to come back 
to that for a second. Let's let that preheat a little bit. Okay, so roast chicken is in the oven. I've got my braise going now, and the braise technique, the preliminary searing, the deglaze, the stock, the cover, classic technique, a lot of options there with what I can do. We're gonna come in later with some mushroom and, and do one of our plates with some mushroom with the sauce and some just with the braise. Um, but we also now wanna talk about garnishes, right? Okay. So, I have here some elements I'm gonna be working with today. And we talked about root vegetables and I know many of my students that are in culinary programs the holy grail of knife cuts is the tournay, right? So you see we have some tournay potato here. Also got some diced potato here. We've got some small diced celery root. We've got these cuts here. I don't know if anybody knows what these are called, right? These triangle or diamond shaped cuts. I have white turnip, carrot, and yellow turnip or rutabaga. I like saying rutabaga, right? It's fun. Okay. What cut is the, are these called? Let's see if they know the cut of that. Okay, let's see who gets it right. It's a French word, yes. And it's an actual classic cut. Let's see who gets that, okay? We also have some green vegetables to look at. We've got some beautiful Brussels sprout here. No one likes the Brussels sprout. Don't know why, but if you take a Brussels sprout and you just boil it, it's not interesting. It's not fun. People don't like it. They don't want it. But the Brussels sprout can have other applications, right? Here, we're doing a shredded Brussels sprout. We call that a chiffonade, right? Thinly, thinly sliced Brussels sprout leaf. And we're gonna do that saute very simply, okay? So you'll see that. And then we're gonna do it in a hash with some of the root vegetables. So that's gonna come together. But let's get started with one of our other dishes. We're gonna bring out the salmon. And we're gonna get the ball rolling here with a salmon dish. Oh, we got one. She was right. Abriana, Abriana Medina. Medina. What did Abriana call it? Lausanne. Lausanne. Congratulations. That's wonderful. That's terrific. So happy to hear that. Mia, let's, uh, let's get that convection oven going with a side towel. Let's put that in at 400. This oven seems to be just a little slow today. 400 and put it right in. Okay, so we have a beautiful piece of salmon here. This is a salmon that we're using in our dining lab restaurant. This is, a, a, we call this a loin of salmon. It's cut from the filet, okay? I'm going to portion out a couple of pieces here and we're gonna show you a couple of different presentations. Now, I'm thinking to myself, salmon, I like that idea. What am I gonna do with this, okay? So, whole muscle, beautiful. I'm gonna cut this into what we call a pavé, which is a straight slice through portion like that. I'll do another one, and we'll do this two different ways for you, okay? Let's put those over here. Let's get, get a close up on those, son. Okay, so pave, if you think about the word pave or pavement, right, like a slab of concrete, like a sidewalk, a pave is a slab, right? Now look at how beautiful, go, go to the cross cut there on that, nice and clean and wonderful, okay? All right, so we're going to approach the salmon the same way, salt and pepper both sides. Okay, one side and the other. This is skinless here. Sometimes I put the skin on, sometimes not. In this case here, I'm gonna keep the skin off. Salt and pepper both sides. And now we want a super hot pan. Let's get one on the fire. Okay. Thank you so much. Let me stop for a second and see if we have any questions at this point. We have our chicken braise on. Chicken is roasting. We moved it to a different oven. The oven wasn't working quite so well for us. We're roasting our chicken 
double chicken breast on the bone. I'm taking a sip of coffee here. Thank you so much, Mia, for the coffee. Thank you, Chef B. What's the question, honey? Salmon looks nasty uncooked. Oh, my goodness. Oh, okay. All right. Well, let's cook it then, right? Okay, so we have our salmon in, ready to go, seasoned up nicely. Some olive oil in my pan. We want to get a good sear. But we're talking about presentation, right? We're talking about presentation today. So it's important I know what side is my presentation side on the fish, okay? And that's easy. The skin side here, because the skin is off, is not going to be my presentation side. The presentation side is going to be the flesh side, okay? So that's the first side that's going to go into the pan, the flesh side, okay? But we don't want to get too, we want to show some restraint here. The pan's not hot. You put the fish in now, we're not going to get any kind of crust, okay? So we want to get that pan hot. We want to see some billowing smoke coming out of there. That oil is at the smoke point. And then we're going to go ahead and get that salmon in the pan, OK? And now I'm thinking about my garnishes here as well, OK? So what's the question? I can't, could you read, I can't see it from there. It's a little too small. Oh, that's a good question. I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. So let me let me let you in on a secret. Zoom in a little bit, son. Bring it in here a little bit. Let me tell this group here something very important. Great cooking, great cooking, okay? Doesn't come from here, right? Doesn't come from recipes. Doesn't come from here. Just like the people in your lives that cook really good. The food that you saw, this is so good, right? My mom, my auntie, my grandma, my friend, my cousin, my wife, whatever. When they cook a dish from here, right, that's cooking. So everything I'm doing today is coming from here, folks, not from here. I'm cooking, right? I'm, I'm going through the emotion of cooking for you with some different ingredients, some good technical skills, some salt and some pepper, some butter, some oil, some fat, but it's coming from the heart, right? That's where great cooking is. That's the best recipe I can give you, right? Be passionate about it, yes? Okay? Good. All right, so can we get onto this one here? So take a look here. We got beautiful heat in this pan. You see it's smoking. Now watch when I put this in. I'm going to skate it in so that it doesn't stick, okay? Very important. We're going to take that salmon. We're going to skate it in. Okay, and we're gonna let it now crust, okay? We're gonna let it crust. Okay, so salmon is going. And for this one, we're gonna do a couple of things. First, we're gonna cook some potatoes here. I'm gonna take advantage of these tournée for one of my dishes. Let me get some hot oil in the pan. Let's go ahead and grab some of these tournée. Get those in the pan. And then we're going to do some of our Brussels sprouts as well. And with the Brussels sprouts, we're going to do a little bit of the uh, potato hash, okay? So I got a couple different kinds of potatoes. My tournée going. Just in some oil right now. second so we're going to do a little poilé technique for them if we can come in chris i got another helper thank you chris mazella happy birthday chris mazella yes happy birthday, chris. happy birthday chris he's spending his birthday here with us today in, in the culinary arts center and here we go butter butter and basting my salmon here as it's cooking basting our salmon 
as it's cooking. Okay, and we're going to cut back the flour a little bit. Wonderful. Okay, hot fat, hot butter, a little bit of olive oil in there. I'm going to put another nugget of butter in there for us. Terrific. Say again? Salt and pepper and great ingredients, right? Salt and pepper. Come and get close on this salmon here. Let's take a look at the sear we got. Okay? Terrific. So now, my salmon is on the turn. It's looking delicious. I have my tournée, which I sauteed a little bit in some hot oil. And I finish with a drop of butter. OK. Hey, you explain what basting is? Yes, it's a good question. So we're using the term basting here. We're taking, if you're getting close here, you can see we got the hot fat and we are basting over the top of the of the of the salmon with the hot butter, hot fat. That's keeping that moisture in and it's getting us a beautiful color. You can see that coming together, yes? Okay. All right, let's go ahead. and get our second garnish together, which is going to be our potato and Brussels sprout hash. Okay, so we're starting with some of our diced cooked potato from our tray. And we're going to get some color on there. And in my other pan, I'm going to just do some buttered vegetable for you. Just let me know if there are any other questions, guys. There's a question uh, from Aaron. Yes, Aaron. How do you work with the pan when the fire is real big like that? I yes. Like no, that's a good question, honey. So what happens is we had a little moisture in the product. We added it to the hot fat and it flared up a little bit. You want to never do anything sudden, right? You want to take it back off the fire, let the fire come down, and then once you got control, put it back on there, okay? So don't panic. Don't jump out of the way. That's when you get hurt. You pull the pan out of the way, you get hurt that way, okay? Just stay, stay with it. It happens. You get used to it after a while. Okay? Oh, okay, again, that's a good question, right? So here's what I want you to do. Come on in here a second, son. Okay, so when I had that salmon sitting here and I touched the salmon, it was soft like this. You see that? Zoom in on that, son. Okay, soft. As it cooks, the salmon gets a little bit firmer. When it's fully cooked, and I open my hand all the way, it gets really firm. So I'm touching the salmon here to feel the firmness, and I'm at medium, which is where I want to be, and I'm stopping the fire right there, okay? All right, so I have my potatoes here, a little bit of salt in there. Now I'm going to add my Brussels sprout to complete my potato and Brussels sprout hash here. We'll put that back on the fire. Okay. And I have my other veg here as well. We're going to get a little more butter in there. And we're going to take that off the fire. 
Did we get our chives together? Okay, so let's go ahead and do our first plate. Okay. I'm going to take a little, a little bit of, uh, of the pan here. Just a touch of olive oil here. George asks, how do you master that flip? How do you master that flip? That's a good question. That's a good question. So it's all about practice, right? You want to, are you on this camera? Yeah? So we want to get the product to the slope of the pan and pull it back. To the slope and back, okay? Terrific. Yes. I could use a little bit of scallion, that'd be perfect, yeah. So let's do our first plate. Okay. How do you want your chive, Chef? Very fine, Chef. Okay, so let's do our first plate here. Now, we are going to use salt and pepper, but we're going to use herbs on every single dish today because herbs are that bright note at the end. I got a little bit of chopped parsley here in my potato and Brussels sprout hash. And we're going to go ahead and make a platform of that. Now, it is true you want it to me to taste this, right? Because everybody's, well, he's not tasting anything. I'm fairly certain that this is fairly delicious. And I'm fairly right. Salt, butter, okay? Delicious. Potato and Brussels sprout. So I have my starch and my vegetable element here all together. And I'm, op I'm opting for what we call a center plate here. this pan, I'm going to make a very quick tomato relish, a little bit of fresh diced tomato, a splash of white wine, a splash of salt, and a touch of sugar. And just a little bit of heat. Okay? Let's go ahead and get that first piece of salmon. If I can get a plating sponge, that'd be wonderful. Okay, let me get some paper toweling here as I do our first plate. Salmon is my main element. My garnish is my starch of potato and my vegetable of the Brussels sprout. I'm going to set that right on top. And we're going to finish it with our tomato. Again, very simple, olive oil, tomato, a splash of white wine, a little bit of salt, a touch of sugar because I want to bring a little bit of sweetness out of the tomato. And then some fresh chive. And then we'll go ahead and get that tomato and we're going to go ahead and just spot that around the plate a little bit. Okay. So everybody gets a bite of the tomato with the salmon. A little bit of fresh chive. Chef, um, when you plate, is it good to have the plate hot? 
Yes, these plates are sitting above my range. Okay, they're nice and warm. Okay, if I were doing this in the restaurant, I would definitely want to put them in the oven a little bit. Okay, but we have our first plate focusing on whole mussel salmon, my tomato garnish, which is my accompaniment, and underneath I have my starch and my veg, that's my potato, and Brussels sprout hash, that's our first plate. Let's do our second one. Monroe College is in New Rochelle, New York, Westchester County. We're about 22 minutes outside of New York City by Metro North train. We also have a campus in the Bronx as well, Bronx, New York. How long did it take to memorize these recipes so well? Where and how did you learn about these recipes? Those are good questions. Again, so I'm just thinking about concepts. So I'm thinking about cooking, you know, cooking my salmon properly, searing it, cooking my vegetable properly, you know, with butter, uh, se seasoning, flavoring, adding some herbs, very simple concepts here. So the recipe really is more of a technique, right? Cooking the, the fish, cooking the potatoes, cooking the veg. So let's go ahead and get our next plate going. This That's a good question. So remember, the first thing people are going to do when they get your food is what? They're going to look at it, right? They want to see it, OK? So we want to show it to them. We want to show it to them in the best way possible. So we want it to look attractive. So we want it to look as good as it tastes, right? Very important. So my potatoes are sauteed with butter. We're going to finish off again with a little bit of herb. I use herbs pretty much all the time, but always at the end of the plate up, right? Where we can keep them nice and green and flavorful. Let's go ahead with five of our tournée. What substitute would you use other than wine? Substitute what? Well, you could use a little bit of wine vinegar in this case for the tomato. That would be fine. You'd get a similar result. Okay. So again, we're going to go center plate. I got those beautiful vegetables here. Okay. Chive in the veg. Using a slotted spoon here so I don't pick up too much of that butter. We got a lot of butter clinging to the veg, and look, there's no color on there, right? We don't want any color on the veg other than the veg themselves, right? See that? Okay, we blot off here any excess butter. Right to the center of my plate. Okay. Coming back here, let's go ahead and take that, that other beautiful piece of salmon. Okay, that's just wonderful. Here, on top of my veg, my potatoes. How long have Monroe College been in business? We have been here for 85 years. And our culinary program is actually in its 20th year. Uh, the why is easy. I love to cook. I love to serve people. I'm passionate about it. It's an integral part of my life. I've been doing this for 40 years. I started when I was 40, well, when I was one years old, right? Only kidding. Okay, so here we go. Okay, tournée potato, root vegetable melange, and our salmon again. Okay, terrific. All right, let's get cleaned up a little bit here, and we're going to go on to our chicken. Okay. Let's pull that chicken out of the oven. Let's take a look at it.
Any questions so far about the salmon dishes that we did today? Perfect. Let's show them what that looks like. Okay, so I have the roasted chicken now. We're going to let that cool down slightly, and then we'll take the bones out. Question? What is the sponge for? That's a good question. So people are asking about the sponge, right? So the sponge we use to clean our plates off, and we keep in our sponge water here just a splash of vinegar, right? And that keeps that, that acetic uh, acid will be a will be a, a disinfectant, right? So that we can use this over and over again during service, even though we're touching food with it, it becomes sanitary, okay? So we use this in the restaurant to clean our plates off. The triangle shape helps us by being able to push product with it, wipe, okay? We have a lot of different things we can do with it. So, chicken is resting. Let's go ahead and saute some mushroom. Start our mushroom and a little bit of oil. If you want to make this this spicy, would you use chili powder or crushed chili? You can absolutely dust it with some chili powder. That would be a nice idea, right? Or you could use some crushed chili peppers, a pepperoncini, in the uh, in the cooking process. Or simply put some hot sauce on it at the end, right? Okay, so I have a combination of mushrooms here for, our, for one of our chicken dishes here. We have some cremini mushroom, we have some oyster mushroom. Can they see me here? Okay. And we have some sliced cremini and we have some shiitake mushroom, okay? So we're going to go ahead and saute these. Again, very important. Again, you're seeing me go through things here, and I'm being asked a, a little bit about recipes. What I really want you to focus on here are the techniques. Notice how hot the pan was when we put the salmon in. And notice how beautiful the salmon looks coming out of the pan, right? Nice and brown. Same thing here. I want to get some heat in the pan before I put my mushrooms in, because I want to saute them, okay? I don't want to steam them. If I put my mushrooms in the pan and the pan is not perfectly hot, it's going to, they're going to start to exude moisture and that's going to lead us to uh, some soggy mushrooms, okay? All right, so do I have heat there yet? Should I move this over some to the next one? Here? You see the smoke in the pan? Now it's time to put the mushrooms in. Okay, I'm putting in my oyster mushrooms, my shiitake mushrooms, and my cremini mushroom. Okay, just a very nice mix here. And notice I said saute, and we learned about the saute technique in school. It's jump, right? To jump, to toss. But I'm not tossing the pan, right? Say again? Of the plates? Okay, so we're keeping our plates uh, entree portion size, right? More of a fine dining element size, right? So we have a nice size of portion of protein, four to five ounces. We've got vegetable and, and starch to balance that out. Um, so this is kind of what we would look at in a, in a fine dining a la carte uh, entree driven restaurant, okay? All right, focus in here for a second. So the mushrooms are sitting in the pan in a little bit of the fat no movement here yet because I want them to stay down in the pan so I can get some color on them, okay? Very important, okay? At this point, I'm gonna add a nugget of butter. And I'm gonna let those mushrooms cook a little bit. No salt yet. Once I put salt in the mushrooms, I'm gonna be drawing out moisture and that's gonna create a problem with the color. We want there to be some color in the pan, so I want to get my color first before I add the salt and pepper. So now 
I can go ahead and add my salt and my pepper. Okay. If you want to zoom in on those, son, you can see beautiful color here. Okay. Salt and pepper, butter. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of chive now. And we're going to hold this on the side to finish my dish. We've got to turn our attention now to our chicken. Okay? So our chicken is about 90% of the way cooked. Remember, I took this bone, the sternum here, and I loosened it up before I roasted the chicken so I can get that bone out easily. And that comes right out. Rib bones come right off. So now I have a boneless breast with just a wing attached. I'm taking out all but the wing joint bone. And this looks really good. Okay? Looks pretty juicy as well. The last thing I want to do is remove my wishbone. I could have done this before. Either way. Okay? Now, the benefit of cooking the chicken on the bone for a roast is I get maximum flavor and moisture. So we're going to see that now as I cut into this chicken. Perfectly cooked. Look at the moisture. Zoom in on that, son. Zoom in on the moisture coming out here. You can see that? Okay. Now we just want to address the skin. So we're going to crisp that up a little bit in some butter. And show you a couple of variations here. Okay. All right, now. Let's go ahead. We did before the hash with the potato and the Brussels sprout. Now we're going to do the hash with the vegetable and the Brussels sprout. And we're going to do two variations on the potato using the same potato. How are we going to do that? That sounds crazy, but we're going to do it. Do I have any questions while I have a moment? Nice and loud on the questions, please. Any questions? Excellent. Okay. They want to see the chicken, I gather, right? Okay, so we're going to start with our root vegetables here in the butter. Let them get nice and hot. our Brussels sprout. In the meantime, in my hot fat, my hot butter here, we're just going to get this skin nice and crisp. Okay? Terrific. Let's do a quick clean up here, a little wipe down. Okay? Yes? Yeah, so everything I'm doing right now is taking food to the heat source, right? So once I'm doing that, uh, bringing food to the heat source, I don't even need to have gloves on. My gloves are on because I just finished plating. But because everything I'm doing is going back to the fire and not to the guest's mouth, I don't have to wear gloves. You know, I could use bare hands at this point, okay? When I go to plate, We'll change gloves, we'll bring the plates down. That's a good question. Do you sometimes add other types of seasonings to the meat? Sure, what do you want to add? Or do 
Would you like to add? Give me some ideas. Okay, Brussels sprouts are in now. My shredded Brussels sprout, we're going to continue to cook this. Could go right on top of the stone, right on top of the stove with the chicken. Complete here, no oven at all. Okay. Okay. So we have our hash on the fire. Cooking. We have our chicken skin getting nice and crispy. Hash is looking real good. Okay, so we have our, our hash working real nice here, our root vegetables and our Brussels sprouts. I'm going to add some fresh chive and parsley to that. Again, very simple. I know a lot of you are asking questions about what to add. I would, I would encourage you to subtract right and focus on the actual flavors of the food right the salmon the, the chicken you know the braise the the reduction of the stock right the good seasoning and bring out those natural flavors and then from there you can experiment if you want to add some additional elements right to the dish so let's get started with our first plate up of our chicken i'm going to take a moment here Take off our gloves. We'll do a quick sanitize of our station. Why is butter kept in water? That's a very good question. The answer to that question is so that the butter does not melt on my station into a mass to which I have to use a spoon, right? Now, if I need a piece of butter in my pan, I can do that. It won't melt in the water. <laughs> That's a great question. My, my doctorate is in education, but I'm going to let you on a secret. I've probably bandaged up about 2,000 cuts in my career. So that would make me a doctor right there. Okay. Good stuff. So, a couple of questions, right? So, when you have cuts like these of potatoes, you get a fair amount of trimming, right? If anybody's done knife cuts, you know that when you do knife cuts, you have to square, you trim, you got a lot of potato stuff, and then I hope we don't throw those away, right? So what happens to all the trimming that we generate? Because remember, folks, we call it culinary arts, but here at, at the Constitute of New York at Monroe College, we're not just teaching you how to cook, we're teaching you how to manage a business because it's called culinary arts, but it's commerce, it's business. And if you're not smart in business, you go out of business, right? So what do I do with all the trimmings? I gotta do something, right? 
Okay, so we do something with the trimming. We make a delicious puree. And I'm gonna feature that puree on my next dish, okay? I have some delicious potato here. I'm warming it up. This potato is cooked simply in salted water until they're fully tender, and then we mash them up. Adding a little, a little bit of cream. We're using a, we're using a, a sauce pot. This one is stainless steel, but you could use an aluminum pot, it's fine, okay? Say again? How do you multitask? That's a good question, you know? I don't know, I, I don't really think about it that way so much, right? Uh, I just know what I gotta get to my plate, so that's what I'm thinking, right? So speaking of our plate, let's do it. Okay, got my puree going, heating up nicely. I'm going, getting ready now for my my second, my third plate up of our four plates today. And we're gonna feature our potato. Chris, you wanna grab me a pastry bag, son? Let's show them something, let's show them something fun. Okay? All right, so now, hash. This looks really good, right? Let's go ahead and taste it. See if we like it. So, I'm tasting, I taste the butter, obviously. I taste the Brussels sprout. I got the carrot. I'm, I had a piece of celery there that I had in my mouth. It was really good. Okay. Let's go ahead and do our plate up now. So, when we're thinking about plating, we want to think about, again, what's attractive to our guests, right? Let's go ahead and do that. Let's give it some thought. I want this plate to look really good. So I'm going to take my pastry bag here. I got a beautiful hot potato puree now. I'm going to put that in my bag. cut off my tip here. Oh, that's so hot in my hand, right? That's a good question. So with clarified in terms of the sauteing? In terms of sauteing, you mean? So you could use the clarified butter. If you use whole butter, you gotta be particularly careful, right? You don't burn it, okay? So let's go ahead and start with our potato first. And we're gonna do more of a traditional potato here, traditional plating rather, with our puree. Notice the pastry bag gives me an ability to add some movement and shape to the plate. I have this absolutely delicious hash here. I'm gonna go ahead and put that right here. This type of plating we call a 10 to 6 plating, 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock on the clock is my center of my plate, yes? Let's hold that for the next one. Now you thought I forgot. I know you did, but I didn't. You forgot about the braise, right? I did not. All right, so we're going to add that element of our braise here. Let me get a little more heat in there. I'm also gonna taste it real quick. That's pretty good. I definitely get the tomato. What do you Oh honey, don't mess it up, right? Don't mess it up, be confident in yourself. Right? The presentation is important, but what's on the plate is more important, I think, right? It's got to taste really good. 
Be proud of yourself. When you pledge something, take pride, yes? Okay, so I have my braised chicken here. We're going to set that down. And my sauce, I'm going to take a little bit of that sauce. This is really nice. Rich of tomato. Look at that. Rich of the tomato. Seasoning. Absolutely delicious. And now the roasted chicken. You know what? I don't have I don't have any regrets. I don't have anything I would have done differently. I love what I do. I love to cook. I love to teach. I'm blessed every day. I'm blessed every day I get to do this. And there's my roast chicken with braised chicken thigh. Okay? Puree potato. And a Brussels sprout and root vegetable hash, or we can call that an autumn hash. How about that? All right, let's do our next plate. Now, watch how I vary this now. Bring it in here, son. I take the same braids that I had. I'm adding mushroom. Okay? To the braids. I'm going to bring some heat back to this now. So now I have a sauce with some mushroom. The braised chicken, I'm taking the same puree, which you saw me pipe, but now we're going to add more cream to it, okay, and make the puree texture very different. Let's put that back on the fire. So same puree, same seasoning, took it from a, a point where I could pipe it out of a pastry bag, now we're going to cream it. So we don't, we can't pipe it anymore. Now it becomes a liquid puree, and that's going to give us a different presentation. Yes. Let's heat it up. Now you'll notice I went to a different plate here, okay? I went to a rectangle plate, okay? And watch what happens now with my puree. My puree now is liquid, loose, right? Look, okay, from the extra cream. I'm going to go ahead and drop my puree down on my plate, and I'm going to go ahead and pull it across the plate. In the void where my, my spoon was, I'm going to lay my puree. On top of my puree, I'm going to lay my sauce and my mushroom. take our hash and ease that out. Across the plate to the end, getting some color in there as I go. A little bit of carrot. We're going to finish it off with our perfectly cooked chicken, but this time we're not going to serve the entire breast. What kind of food you get for? It's 
Uh, I don't have any specialties. I love cooking Italian cuisine. That's my, that's my heritage cuisine. Okay? But I'm very comfortable cooking any type of cuisine, right? So let's get all four plates back together again. We can see some different plating here, some different techniques. Our two salmon dishes, our other chicken dish here, so they can see the contrast. And now is an opportunity for us to take any questions that the group might have. So my background, I'm Italian American. I was born in Brooklyn, New York. My background in school, I went to New York City College of Technology, got my associates and my bachelor's there. That's where I learned cooking. From there, I got my master's degree at Rochester Institute of Technology. My doctorate is in education from Augusta University. I've been a professional chef for 32 years. I've worked in restaurants throughout the city. Uh, I've been teaching for about 30 years, uh, and I love it. I love what I do. hardest dish. So we've done some competitive cold food presentations at the Culinary Olympics. That's probably the most intricate work I've ever done. I have a silver and bronze medal from the Olympics from 1984 and 2004. I was twice at the Olympics, once as a student apprentice in 84, and then I was the captain of the New York team in 2004 that went here for Germany to compete at the Culinary Olympics. So cold food by far is the most intricate, uh, you know, complex food to work on, where you're displaying beautiful platters of food, a lot of elements, a lot of moving parts. Um, so those, that would definitely be amongst the top. What do you do to make food you're not familiar with or learning to? Well, you know, I'm very jealous of students these days. Because in my time growing up, going to school, this is a while back, and I know some of my teachers can commiserate with this. We didn't have Google, right? We didn't have the internet. We didn't have YouTube. We stumbled upon things. Somebody, I remember working in a restaurant in 1984, and somebody came in with a kiwi. We'd never seen anything like it. We didn't know what to do with it. We ate it with the skin on. Then we said, I don't think that's the way you're supposed to do it. Take the skin off. Somebody came in with an herb we had never seen before. It was called cilantro. And we put it in everything, because it was new. We put it in the savory food, we put it in desserts. We didn't know what to do with it. I'm very jealous of my students today, because you can Google anything. You can travel the world without leaving this space I'm in right now. And then recreate those dishes, right, with those ingredients, which you can get all over now, right? Because it's a global market. So I would Google it if I weren't familiar with it. I'd see what other people do with it, and I would apply my own skill to it. Good question. More questions. More questions. Have you always had an interest in culinary? So I will tell you my story with culinary. Uh, my story with culinary, just uh, text her, start without me. Um, my, my story in culinary is I did not know I was going to go to culinary school. I had a friend who went to culinary school. When I was in high school, he was going to culinary school. In high school, folks, and this is a story, my guidance counselor told me I was not college material. And it was devastating to me. And he told me that because I had a little problem with a subject called math. And I didn't do well on the SATs, and he didn't think I was ready to go to college. But when my friend told me he was going to school, and he was actually going to culinary school, that was a shocker to me. I didn't know you could do such a thing. I didn't know there was such a thing. So I went to visit the school with him, and I was just taken by the whole thing. And I, I enrolled pretty much that same day. And the rest, as I say, is history. I love to cook. What I love more than cooking is I love working with young people. I love being an educator. I came to this program 12 years ago. I already had about 20 years in as a teacher. 
I created a program that I am intensely proud of. I created a program that is now re recognized on niche.org, which is a site that recognizes colleges and universities throughout the country. We are the number one culinary program in New York. We're the number one culinary program in the Northeast, and we're the number four culinary program in the country. And I could not be prouder of that, or of my students, or my faculty and staff, because I've got the best faculty and staff. As good as my faculty and staff are, my students are even better, right? You can see my people working here. Totally proud to run this program. It's incredible. I'll take a few more questions. Anything? Oh, okay. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you so much. I, you know, I, I, I love doing these, uh, these uh, virtuals, but I love being out there with you guys. I'm hoping to be able to get out to LA this year and back to Arizona, and to get around to some schools. But back in the late winter, hopefully things will turn around. But in the meantime, we'll keep you guys engaged with some of these virtuals. We'll do some things for you. I enjoy this. I enjoy working with my kids. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you, Mia. Thank you, Jake, so much. Uh, to all my, my uh, viewers, I really appreciate you tuning in. Another question? Uh, can you tell us about the programs and degrees offered at CINY at Long Beach? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, CINY offers associate's degrees in culinary arts or baking and pastry. But the majority of our students come in for our culinary or baking program. But most importantly, they stay for their bachelor's in hospitality management. That is critical. I mentioned earlier about business and how it's important to understand business. So that said, our program is built around three semesters per year, which means that our students are coming in and in two and a half years are getting both their associate's degrees in culinary or baking and their bachelor's in hospitality. And for many of them, by the time they're, they're not even 21 yet, they're already out working with a bachelor's degree, making money. It's awesome, right? And that's really what we're offering here. On top of that, you should know that our college, I've worked for many institutions in my career. I've been in Monroe for 12 years, but prior, I'd worked at other colleges, both in the CUNY system, the SUNY system. No one supports their students better than this college, right? Academic support, you know, everything that you need to be successful, we offer. We have the best completion rates, the best graduation rates of any co of the colleges, and we do what we do so well because I believe this, we really care about our kids, right? Everybody that works for me knows that you gotta care about the students, you gotta be committed to their success, and we really work hard um, to those, to those uh, ends. You know, that's a good question. What is the cuisine I find difficult to make? You know what? I, I don't really have any difficulties with cooking. I, I embrace all, all, uh, all, all cuisines. I'm very comfortable cooking because I think technically, if you understand this, sauteing, frying, braising, grilling is a technique that transcends all ethnic cuisines, right? Whether you're cooking Asian food, you're cooking regional American food, you're cooking food from France or Europe or Spain, grilling, cooking, you know, all the techniques are the same. So you've got a universal language of technique that can be applied to any cuisine. What is your favorite dessert? My favorite dessert, wow. Uh, what's, what's, uh, what's in the pastry case right now? That's my favorite, right? Uh, I do love desserts, I do love sweets. Um, I'm not, I'm, I'm not prejudiced about any kind of sweet, any kind of ethnic sweet, European style desserts, American style desserts. I, I'm happy with it all. I really, I do love to, do love to, uh, I love to work in pastry, work with pastry, uh, but I also enjoy pastries very much. But I do have a signature chocolate cake recipe I developed through my career that is a very successful recipe. And perhaps I'll do something next time. What do you think, Jake? We'll bring out the chocolate cake again on the next time? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I'll show you my favorite chocolate cake dessert. Mine. Which country has the best food? <laughs> 
Um, I will tell you, it's, I, I don't want to, I don't want to sound cliche, but it's whatever I am in the, in the mood for, right? I love the Spanish tapa. I love the Asian cuisine. I love the stir fry, right? I love the dim sum. I love the, I love the beef bourguignon, the French cuisine. I love the cuisine de Bordeaux. I love it all, right? So whatever I feel like having at that moment, I can transcend myself at that moment to any place in the world through cuisine, right? I want to visit Nice. I make a Niçois salad. I sit on my patio, and I'm in Nice for an afternoon, right? Make sense? Not really, but that's kind of the idea. I appreciate it. Thank you all so very much. Uh, I really do appreciate your time this afternoon. I'm glad we had an opportunity. Uh, we're going to sign off in a moment. This has been saved, and we can you can uh, visit this again if you want to review some of the techniques that we showed you today. And we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you, everybody.